Are you having problems with prompting in Stable Diffusion 2.0? Not getting very good results? Well, don't worry, you've got a nerdy rodent video to help you now. I'm going to use the automatic 1111 web UI, and you can too, because it is free to download and install. You're also going to need the version 2.0768V Stable Diffusion model and its associated configuration file. All you need to do is download them into your Stable Diffusion models directory, ensuring that the YAML file and the checkpoint both have the same name. As long as you're using the very latest Automatic 11.11 web interface, that's it. You're up and running and ready to go, and that's what I'm going to be using right here. Okay, the very first thing to realize with Stable Diffusion 2 is that it uses a different clip model. This means that prompting is very, very different. Your old prompts, which worked in Stable Diffusion 1.5, will not be the same in Stable Diffusion 2. It's a completely different text model. Another thing that won't work are your old embeddings, as they are 512 by 512. You can make new embeddings, though, 768 by 768 with a new model. So if you want to use embeddings, you can still do that, but you will need to make them fresh. One tool which may help you on your version 2.0 prompting journey is this clip interrogator tool. You can just drag a picture onto here, click submit, and then in a few seconds, it will give you a prompt that is based on the new clip encoder, the VIT-H model. It's important to realize that this new open clip model is very different to the old open AI model. Here we have some text. Let's just copy and paste this into our new Automatic 11.11 web UI. We've got the 768V EMA checkpoint enabled up there. We're gonna set the size to 768 by 768, and we're gonna generate that example prompt. Just quickly fix these brackets up here and then we'll see what it generates. As you can see, it is indeed very different from the image that I dragged and dropped in there to get the text prompt, but it does give you an example of the sorts of words that you can use with the new version 2.0. With that in mind, let's start with a very, very simple prompt. This is exceptionally basic. Here we have a steampunk cat in a cyberpunk city, one of my favorite initial prompts to test with. Here we're using the Euler sampler and 50 steps. As you can see, it comes up with a fairly decent cat. Guidance scale in version 2 does have quite a large impact. As you can see, this was done with a guidance scale of 5.75. If we double that to 10, for example, then we get a very similar image, but with a whole load of extra detail. And as with the previous stable diffusion models, the higher you set the guidance scale, the more sort of baked or cooked the image will look. As with Stable Diffusion 1.5, the steps will also have a fairly large impact on your image. If we run that same prompt again, but with half the number of steps, with 25 steps, we still get a very good looking cat, but slightly different details in there. Each of the samplers will also give you a very different result. So depending on what you're going for, you may need to pick a different sample. What I found basically is that the DPM samplers give you a very good image with lots of texture, whereas the Euler samples will give you an image that is a lot smoother, perhaps slightly more similar to the version 1.5 images that you are used to. Let's have a quick look at what all these different samplers look like. Here we have the DPM++ 2M sampler. As you can see, that is a very realistic image. We've got lots of nice textures on the skin, some fantastic eyebrows, some lovely eyes, and great texture details on the clothing as well. I think that looks very good. Now, what happens if we run exactly the same thing, but with the Euler sampler? Here, you can see the image is very, very similar but we've lost a lot of that detail on the skin. Everything seems to look a lot smoother, so that may be a look that you are going for. If so, then choose the Euler sampler. And if you want to use the DDIM sampler, that looks very, very similar indeed. As you can see, it only changed a small amount there. One thing where Stable Diffusion 2 does seem to excel compared to 1.5 is with that new text encoder. It seems to understand concepts a lot better than the previous version. For example, here I'm looking at the concept next to. So I've got a cute rabbit next to a large water jug. Everything else is just irrelevant. That's basically just to create a nice looking image. Now, Stable Diffusion 2 is quite good at this. It's like, okay, yes, I'm going to put that rabbit right next to that jug. 
excellent. Now, what happens if we change this model to the old 1.5 pruned EMA checkpoint? I'm going to drop it back down to 512 by 512 just to be fair to this model, and we'll see how this does on exactly the same prompt. As you can see, there's not even a jug in there. We just have the rabbit. So in Stable Diffusion 1.5, some of these concepts like next to are, generally speaking, more of a suggestion, whereas in 2.0, it will take you a lot more literally. And you'll find the same also goes for other concepts such as on top of. So here I'm generating a steampunk rodent on top of a birthday cake. Again, the rest of the text is mostly irrelevant. I'm just seeing if it will put the rodent on top of the cake. Yes, there it is, a rodent on top of a birthday cake. It seems to have understood that concept rather well. We can, of course, also do even more ridiculous things, such as a fresh trout on top of a bicycle. And once again, as you can see here, we have a fresh trout on top of that bicycle. It seems to understand these concepts very well. And just testing another concept here. So this is the concept of inside. Here I'm going to generate a photo of a steampunk rodent inside a glass jar. And there it is. Steampunk rodent inside a glass jar. That looks fantastic to me. If we try this thing in 1.5, as you can see, it's similar. We do have the rodent and we do have the glass jar, but the rodent is not inside the glass jar. It is instead on top of it, perhaps even slightly merged with it. Now, what happens if we try and make up our own concepts? So here I have a happy woman with three eyes. Now, obviously people don't normally have three eyes. So what will Stable Diffusion 1.5 make of that? Okay, we've got a very happy woman. It's got the happy, but normal people have two eyes. And so this image has just two eyes as well. If we try the same thing with Stable Diffusion version 2, then, as you can see, we get a very similar image, but it is sort of trying to do the three eyes. It's got two eyes, but then they have these round circles around them as well. So perhaps it is thinking maybe three eyes is glasses. But how good is Stable Diffusion 2 at styles? Let's have a look at an impressionist art style painting of the dream I had last night. And there it is, an impressionist art style painting. To me, that looks pretty good. Obviously here, I haven't used any artists. I've simply explained that I want the image to be in a particular style. And here is an example of a graffiti art style. I've got a saloon car covered in parsley and with coriander on it, spray painted onto a wall. And that looks very good to me. It's certainly a graffiti art style. Now, I've only been testing for a couple of days, but photorealistic images is certainly something that Stable Diffusion 2 seems to shine at. Here in this example, I've got a stunning portrait of a dream creature. Now, it is a painting, but I've also added lots of text on there, such as realism and photography, 200 millimeter, things like that. And in my negative prompts, which I'll dive into in a minute, I also have things which go against drawing, so things like sketches, illustrations, stuff like that, and I get a fairly photorealistic image of what looks like a bit of a stuffed toy there. If we have a quick look at photorealism in faces, here I've got a close-up portrait of a lovely young lady from Wales. As you can see, I think that is a very, very photorealistic portrait. Stable Diffusion 2 still has plenty of styles in there, all they have removed from the data set is those not suitable for work things, but that does mean that we can still mix various types together. So here I'm mixing a painting of a woman and also photorealism as well. And let's have a look at that. As you can see, we get a lot of nice detail here. It does look real, but it also looks like a painting. That hair looks rather fantastic. I think all that looks very good. Mixing the two styles together of a painting and realism. If science fiction is your thing, like it is mine, then don't worry, you can still create plenty of science fiction images. So here I have a cinematic film still of a cyborg. As you can see, your prompts do not have to be complex at all, but it does help to have something in the negative prompt there. I have blocks, JPEG, and some dusty particles. There is my cyborg. Very smooth, I think. Very nice looking cyborg. 
and there is still some celebrity information in there as well. So for example, if I add Will Smith to the negative prompt there, so I don't want humans, I'm hoping to get something a little bit more robotic, then maybe if I take humans out, will I get an Android? Yes, I will. Okay, so we've had a lot of tests there. We've seen paintings, we've seen impressionism, we've seen realistic things. How about another style just to finish this section off? going to have a cartoon style graphic novel illustration of a cyborg because I still like science fiction and there we have a very cartoony sort of illustration effect image. Now the astute amongst you might have noticed that I've been using some rather interesting negative prompts. Let's start here with a close-up portrait of an elf bard, RPG avatar face, fantasy art photo style. Okay so that's a very nice image but I want it to change a little bit. So I'm gonna put some more information into the prompts. So here I have a close-up portrait, it's still the same thing, but I'm putting a forest in the background. I'm using a dark color palette, and I'm also making it a little bit more realistic. As you can see in the negative prompts there, I've put things in like 3D render, illustration, cartoon, sketch, things like that. So all of those are not photos. I want a photorealistic one. So there we go. We've got our elf bard in the forest. Looks pretty good. But how can we change this even more? Well, say I wanted to change this to more of a 3D render style, then we'll pop this in. So we'll keep the close-up portrait of a bard, but I've taken out render from the negative prompts and I put render back into the positive prompts. So now when we render this, we'll have a very different image to the photorealistic one. There it is. So it's still photorealistic, but the image has changed quite considerably. Perhaps I want this as an oil painting instead. So again, we'll use much the same prompt, but I'm adding oil painting in there. With just that one oil on canvas word, again, we've got a very different feel, but a very similar image. And just switching that oil on canvas up to hyperrealism, again, I get a very similar image, but with a more realistic looking face. And what happens if I put all of this together into one massive set of prompts? So here I've got a photorealistic close-up. I want a fantasy art digital render. I want a dark color palette. I want a forest in the background. I've got some pretty ears and I've got all this hyper-realism. So I'm mixing all sorts of things up. And I've also got this absolutely massive negative prompt in there as well. Let's just show you what it looks like without the negative prompt to start with. I've got a very, very different image there. It's Similar, it is similar. We've still got these horns and it's still a druid and it's still a forest, but it's very, very different. So what you can do, throw in a load of negative prompts. Now, as you can see from these, it almost doesn't matter what you put in your negative prompts. So for example, I've got some stir fry noodles in there, wet pasta in a bag, uh, some clay sandwiches, uh, an opera on wheels, things like that. Really, really weird. I will get a lovely photorealistic image and there, I think that one looks rather good. Now, if I try that exact same prompt, but with a 512 model, the old SD 1.5, then the image is not quite as good, which leads me on to some other things about Stable Diffusion 2 as well. As you can see from this 1.5 image, one thing you probably haven't noticed so much in Stable Diffusion 2 is all those extra ears and eyes. Now, as you can see, this elf has some very, very pointy ears, and often they will have four or more ears, such as if you try to generate a rabbit or a mouse or anything like that. Typically, it won't have the correct number of ears, whereas in Stable Diffusion 2, it does. It does seem to have the correct number of ears. Are hands better as well? A little bit. Hands are a little bit better in Stable Diffusion 2. If, for example, we run this prompt, a photo of a perfectly normal human hand in Stable Diffusion 1.5. There we have what you are used to, perfect picture of some excellent and perfectly normal hands. Whereas here in Stable Diffusion 2, okay, it's not quite as mutated and it does have quite a lot of texture detail. See here, we've got the very hairy arm, we've got an actual proper thumb there, fingers. I think if you were looking at that hand at a particular angle, it could maybe look like that. It's close, but it is a little bit better at hands. And if you found that interesting, you may also be interested in this video.